I've been waiting to do this one for quite a while because I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do with this. But this is a bag of sand. And if you're not a routine watcher of this channel, you might think to yourself, why would Kyle possibly be excited about opening a bag of sand? But if you're a fellow prospector like me, you'll probably be a little excited to hear that this is from Cape Disappointment in Washington. A subscriber of mine sent me this bag of sand and I'm really excited to open it. I want to smell the ocean and I'm going to pan it out and I'm going to compare it with a shovel of my local North Saskatchewan River sand. I will be throwing it into a 12 mesh classifier, uh, but this is beach sand, so that's probably not necessary. But let's find out for sure. Hmm, there must be a strategy here. I think this is our strategy. Okay. <laughs> I could take my gloves off. But this water is downright freezing. Okay. We're getting into it. All right. What do we got here? Uncle Jimmy's. Cape Disappointment, December 2022, with the magnetics removed. Okay. Magnetics removed. Very curious to see this. And right here, Uncle Jimmy's Cape D raw sand, December, 2022. Uh, Uncle Jimmy's out West. I'll put a link in the description of this video if you wanna check out his YouTube channel. I think he's kind of just doing this for friends and family and stuff. But if you watch one of his videos, he has the most relaxing voice you have ever heard. It's awesome. You can just like watch a video right before bed and it will calm you, it's awesome. I've heard about Cape Disappointment. I've heard about the beach mining. This is what looks to me like pure black sand concentrates, but it's raw sand from the beach. That is going to be very, very different to what we're gonna get here on the North Saskatchewan River. So I'm gonna pour this in with the classifier just for the heck of it. But uh, yeah, I'll do that one afterwards. But this is, uh, this is crazy. It's heavy, very heavy. Oh, I don't even think I need the knife for this. All right, whatever beach smell I was expecting, I didn't get. It's, give you guys a close up right here. That is going to be very difficult panning. It's just like all heavy, heavy, heavy black sand. All right. That quick. Beach sand, ladies and gentlemen. This pan is just way heavier than it should be. A tiny bit of blonde sands on top here, but why don't you guys give me a minute? <laughs> because this is going to be a long pan. So I'm gonna get this pan down part of the way, carefully into a separate pan, but then I'm gonna show you this 
side by side with what one shovel of North Saskatchewan River sand looks like. I'm going to take my uh, tailings, put that somewhere safe, and then I'm going to fill that pan with some North Sass gold. And I just want to do some close up side by side because this is really, really interesting stuff. I swear, I actually, see some tiny flakes of gold in here, too. In fact, I think I saw a piece of gold go over the front lip there. There is definitely gold in here. Okay. I can run that through the high banker later. Because even with my careful panning, I definitely had a couple of flakes of gold in that as well. Really, probably should have tested this on some sort of recovery matting, but being that I'm flying out of the country soon, I just wanted to make sure I actually got to at least do something with this. Because it is amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring some of this home actually in a little container I can. I don't know if I'll fly it with me to Australia or not, but I want to be able to experiment with this later. This size of shovel is going to have your blonde sand, your black sands, any gold, and all the big rocks. That's going to go into a 12 mesh classifier. beach of our own here. Got some clam shells. Here's a little baby clam. Freshwater clams. Kind of dark and dreary, but uh, this is my oversize here in Alberta. Before I let any of this over the edge, it's all just mud really. From that one shovel, this is the amount of sub 20 mesh that I get. Just the color initially. So I'm gonna pan this stuff down until I get to black sands only. And then we'll have a look side by side at the two black sands. Panning this is so easy because I'm I'm basically just shaking it. All of the black sand gold sinks down and it's just this blonde light sand. Because it's so light, I'm able to pan it really quickly. It's not that I'm good at panning or anything, it's just this area. You've got a whole bunch of this really nice light stuff. Oh, taking it back. I don't know, up close here. That was just the initial flash in the pan we got there. There's a little bit of uh, gold showing. So that'll be nice. So this is sort of the final mix. I've got my black sand, my garnets, and even now a little bit of blonde sand. So the quantity of black sand is like just one little spoon compared to Cape Disappointment, which is all black sand. When it comes to a high banker, that's going to affect your feed rate. You're able to process this blonde sand the same way I'm able to pan it out very quickly. You're able to process that out very quickly with your sluice box. So you'd have to run a much lower feed rate per width of sluice. Now with that utmost adventurer, my latest big high banker, it's 20 inches wide of sluice box. 
but you're not going to be able to shovel into that thing anything close to what I can do on the North Saskatchewan River just because of I only have this much black sand to deal with per shovel. Now, to get these side by side, that's basically all black sand. So what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to speed pan this stuff uh, just over the edge into a bucket and then just the last sort of teaspoon of it that's left, I'm going to pan on camera down to about this and we can go back and forth with a real macro shot and see if we can see the differences in color and size of the black sand and any gold that might be in this. I can already see gold in the bottom corners here and the gold actually looks similar to North Saskatchewan River gold. It's just these tiny little dots. North Saskatchewan also has some bigger flakes mixed in. <laughs> bigger is a relative term. I'm only seeing the dots here. But there's areas where I can find in a full shovel like that and just a teaspoon of black sand, maybe 200 to 300 of these tiny little dots. Whereas the amount of actual beach material I just got here, like this is probably pretty rich stuff, but here in the North Saskatchewan, I don't worry about having a black sand separator mixed into my rig. Um, it keeps up just fine. You just, you know, process out the black sand. But I wonder if your throughput, your speed of processing could increase at a beach like this if you actually use some sort of a magnet. What percentage of this black sand is actually magnetic versus what percentage is just the non-magnetic black sand? Because I get both here in Alberta. All questions to answer later. For now, I just want to see the gold side by side. So I'm just as carefully as I can panning this stuff. It is crazy. So I'm going to do a different panning technique now. I'm going to bring everything up to, there's definitely some gold in here. I saw one bigger flake as well, which is cool. But I'm going to get everything up to the front of the pan here. Hopefully, I have my gold up in a ring at the front. And then this just gives me a wider surface area. You can see I'm really slowly walking that black sand back. It's basically like a intermittent miller table. And I'm just gonna do this until I can get some of the black sand out of there. Then I'll rinse that black sand out and repeat this process a few times. But I'm seeing a lot of little specks of gold here. And while the black sand content and black sand size is a little bit different than the North Saskatchewan, the gold looks very similar. Oh, there's a bigger flake in the corner there showing up. We'll get you some close-ups here on the next, the next run when it's a little bit richer still. So at this point, the gold's starting to come down the edge just a little bit. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything that has come down safely without any gold, that amount. That's going to go here. And then I get everything tapped right back up to that front edge again. And we repeat the process. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the camera. I'm gonna give you a close up side by side of what's left. Uh, there's definitely some interesting takeaways from this. On the left is the North Saskatchewan River gold, and on the right is the Cape Disappointment gold. Now, I have panned some of the black sand out of Alberta, but basically I had about a teaspoon of black sand for one shovel, whereas one shovel of Cape D was almost pure black sand. It took a lot longer to pan out. Something that I think is really interesting is that the black sand is about the same size on both. Here's my North Saskatchewan River gold. You can see there's a mixture of tiny little specks and some slightly, you know, tiny, less tiny, <laughs> won't say bigger, um, but your black sand is all fine. And then if I come over to the Cape Disappointment, it's about 60 colors in that pan. This pan, there's about 150 colors. And the black sand, 
looks roughly similar. Notice that one decent sized flake right there. All of your specs are really, really small. Um, what's, what's interesting about both of these is there's areas where when you get black sand, you can get black sand pebbles, rocks, there's chunks of black sand, like boulders almost. Um, in Alberta, I have noticed that all of my black sand seems to just be really small. I don't get bigger pieces of black sand. Obviously, the same applies to the gold here. So it's kind of interesting that the black sand we're working with, as far as recovery equipment, is very similar. The gold we're working with, I would say on average, I actually have more bigger flakes mixed in, you know, big but flat. That Cape Disappointment stuff is all just the little dots, but there was one bigger piece there as well. But overall size, overall black sand, we're working with the same stuff. Where you're really gonna see a difference is feed rate. I don't worry about having a magnetic separator here in Alberta. I just shovel straight into my box. I've got a 20 inch wide box running raised expanded over miner's moss, and it does a great job of capturing this stuff. I assume it would capture it just as well at Cape Disappointment, but you would have to shovel way slower. There's just so much black sand. Most of the shovel that hits my sluice box goes right over the surface and washes out of the box in a few seconds, and then the black sand slowly feeds down and does its stuff. So that's, that's a consideration. If you're beach mining, I don't know what percentage of this black sand is magnetic, but if a good chunk of it is like properly magnetic, then yeah, your, your feed rate would go way up if you had a magnetic separator built into your system. Whereas the material I work doesn't seem to be a problem. But yeah, that was uh, an interesting comparison. I'm just gonna leave you with a few close up pictures. The light's getting a little dim right now. So it's a bit tricky to actually get right up close here. Like, I don't know, you can sort of see that. So yeah, we'll just leave you with these close-up shots. Here is your Alberta. Note the black sand, average gold size. I'm gonna come in the same distance over here, your Cape Disappointment. As we get onto where the gold's at there. So decent showing of gold here, but overall black sand and gold size looks similar.